What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, John from the Game Do here, welcoming you back to the next episode of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. In the last episode, we investigated the fourth floor and what lies on it, along with the second floor of the dorm rooms. Yes, the dorms had a second floor that we never knew about until just now. Um, well, we knew about it from Kyoko, but we never got to investigate it till just now. But in this episode, we are going to investigate the things on the fifth floor and see what we could possibly do in here. So first, we're going to go to the dojo, as that is connected to the case. This is going to be more case-related materials, I think, and I would presume. Hi, Toko. Oh, Toko. So this is where you were. I am sort of disgusting. You want me out of your your sight? No, no, no. That's not it at all. I thought maybe you'd find a clue. Well, well, I haven't. I didn't find anything. Not a single clue. I figured since this place was related to the case, it would have have something, right? But there's a there wasn't a anything out of the ordinary here. Give it back. Give back my precious t -t time. Calm, calm down, Toko. Don't tell m me to calm down. Do you have any idea what, what I'm g going through right now? When everyone finds out, uh, they, they're they going to call me useless, g good for nothing. Nobody's going to say that. Master Will. I'm not sure I can disagree with that one. I don't want that. I'm sick of always looking, being looked down upon. Why won't anyone accept me? Um, well, I don't think there's any clues here, so maybe I'm going to get going. That's it? Okay. I feel like there should have been something in there, and I skipped over it by being let leave the area. Um. Huh? It's gone. Makuro's body. It's not here. What about the chickens? There are still four chickens left. Honestly, I'd be kind of terrified if there were more than that. Did she get put in a shed? <gasps> no, it's the Monokuma flower. It got shoved in the Monokuma flower. Oh, no. Maybe the body's inside of the tool shed. I'd better check to make sure. I didn't find anything close to the dead body. But if it's not here either, then it must be... I have no idea where. But corpses aren't the only thing I need to check here. There's one other thing. That tarp. The tarp played a key role in, an in another case, so I'd better look at it. The killer used the tarp to keep the sprinklers from getting the body wet, which means the killer might have left some clue behind here. Huh? I didn't notice this before, but it's, there's a small stamp on the one corner of the tarp. It says Biolab. Then it originally came from the bio lab. Tarp had been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. And the Monokuma flower is probably what happened with uh, the corpse. That's all I needed. To really needed to check here. But where could the body have gone? I better start looking for it. The Monokuma flower. Is it true? Does it eat paper and plastic and people? Well, I don't think it's related to the case, so I'd better keep my distance. Hmm. You know, I probably just was like, oh, folktale type thing. Oh, um, this room is still exists. That's true. I thought I didn't think about that. Um, oh wait, this room we had access to before though, so this room wouldn't have what we're looking for. We're supposed to investigate rooms that we haven't seen before. Well, I'm here in the bio lab. It's, it's so cold. It's like abnormally cold. I feel like a giant in a, in, a, in a giant refrigerator. It's seriously like, why is it so cold? Okay, there's the tarps. 
There's a stack of tarps here. I've been seeing a lot of these things lately. Ugh, it's so cold. Why is it so cold in here? The first thing I need to figure out. Well, that's the first thing I need to figure out. There's some kind of weird machine built into the wall. I've seen something like this before. That's it. It's the thing in some kind of horror movies and stuff. A fridge that's storing dead bodies. Does that mean the biolag lab is actually a morgue? I should probably take a closer look around. There's a bunch of glowing blue lights. Only some of them are on. The ones on the left. The right hand lights, the right hand ones are off. That's the surveillance camera. There are icicles hanging on from hanging from the monitor. Oh, there's some kind of booklet here. It looks like an instruction manual. We offer eco-friendly alternative to standard dry ice for all your cadaver needs. In addition to the germicidal lamps, we provide also provide an ozone generator for the removal of ethylene gas. Simply insert the ca uh, cadaver with the blue and the blue light will let you know the automated systems have activated. Temperature and humidity levels were also adjusted automatically for optimum settings. With our system, anyone can Keep a body fresh as a daisy for as long as you need. In the unlikely event of a problem, the red light will activate and the alarm will sound immediately. The exterior is stainless steel and we do offer an optional optional leather upholstery upgrade package. This is an instruction manual for the fridge. Well, looking around, I think I get it. It seems clear to me now. It's some kind of makeshift morgue. Biolab secret. And about all those lights and all about all those lights on each slot. It looks like it can be set up so that when the slot is occupied, the blue light comes on. Which would mean, inside each slot lit up in blue, another one of the victims is. Biolab lights has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. I can't let my emotions, emotions take control now. There's only one thing I can do for everyone who has died. And that is, defeat the mastermind. And to do that, I have to continue my investigation. I don't have any other option. Hmm, what room did I miss? Biolab, or headmaster's up until this point. The headmaster's room on the fourth floor, the bio lab on the fifth floor, Monokuma's door in the data center on the fourth floor, and the second door or second floor dormitory area. In addition, the areas directly connected to Makuro's and Igasawa's death are the garden and the dojo. Oh, you know who we haven't checked on yet though is Kyoko. Who said to check on her later? Wait, Jim's second floor. Oh, this is just the uh, okay. 
Sorry, I for a second thought that it was a completely different area. It's not. Ooh, we were told to give her a moment. We have done that, so let's see if she's found anything. There's all kinds of stuff I want to talk to her about, but I better give her some more time. Hmm. Maybe I missed something in this room because I just checked it too quickly. There's a metal plate mounted to the locker. No way I can get it open. Oh, but we have this e handbook. Okay. What about the emergency handbook I found in the headmaster's hidden room? Okay, let's give it one more try. I'm glad I came back here. Beep. All right, just what I was hoping for. Now let's see what I've got inside. I don't see anything. It might be a clue. I took the emergency handbook and ran that uh, and ran that across the card reader and burp. Oh, it opened. Now let's see what we've got inside. I don't see anything that might become a clue. Hmm. I took the emergency handbook and card reader and beep. Looks like the lock open. Now let's see what's inside. This thing is practically empty. There's just one kind of thing. It's some kind of pocketbook. I don't see a name written on it, so I can't say who it is for sure. There's something. There's some writing inside. It could be important. I don't like violating the owner's policy or privacy, but I'd like to take a better look. It looks like girl's handwriting. And all the letters are spaced out evening, evenly. It's like whoever wrote them was measuring them. Whoever wrote this must have been really meticulous. Huh? I was flipping through the pocketbook. But my hand froze when I got to a certain page. I saw there's something familiar written there. Words I'd heard before. There's a plan to turn Hope Peaks Academy into a shelter and isolate the students here for communal life. I decided to talk to the one of them who came up with a plan, the plan directly. It, it, happen, it so happens to be the headmaster and my father. He was willing to give me some more details regarding the plan when he here's what he said the point is to keep the students prodigies safe to keep them in a place or keep them as our hope for the future only their genius can overcome disaster and only their hope can overcome despair for the future of our country our world it's not an exaggeration to call them our final hope we must isolate our superior youth and from the corrupted world to serve as a foundation for the new era this is the only hope we have. I hope that you'll be willing to go along with this plan. So that's what my father had to say to me. As usual, he made a selfish decision without consulting anyone. I can't imagine a worse father. This can't be true, can it? But I knew it was. I knew exactly who the pocketbook belonged to. Kyoko, it couldn't be anyone else. 
But if this belongs to Kyoko, what was it doing in this locker? And what she wrote here completely contradicts what she had already told me. She said she hadn't seen her dad since she, he left when she was little. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. It just so happens that to be the headmaster and my father. What does this all mean? I quickly scanned through the remaining pages of the notebook. I must have been looking for something that would prove me wrong about the whole thing. But when I reached the last page, the question mark spinning through my head just started spinning that much faster. When I looked at it, unlike the rest of the pocketbook, the writing here was messy, disorganized, and scrawled. Despair walks among us. What is this? What does it mean? I've got no idea. How could it possibly make any sense? Locker pocketbook has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. That's the metal walls. Took the emergency handbook and ran to talk to the card reader again. Looks, for, looks like the locker opened. Now let's see what's inside. Don't see anything that might be a clue. Look around a little bit more. Oh, whoa. I look totally disorganized. Whoever it belongs to probably has organization problems every part of their life. This is a crystal ball. Huh? A crystal ball? No, it can't be. There's no way he ever used this locker. It's just not possible. Is this a deck of playing cards? No, they're tarot cards. But wait. Aren't those things for telling fortunes? This is just a coincidence, right? There's all kinds of textbooks, notebooks stacked in up in no particular order. And just dust everywhere. I have to assume whoever stuff this is didn't do a lot of studying. Not that I can really talk. Trying to act casual and natural as casual casual and natural as possible. I picked up the notebook or one of the notebooks I saw. In that moment I looked inside the notebook. Any sense of easiness, I, might, I may, may have evaporated. What? 
There's no denying what I saw. Inside the book, the notebook was written, Yasuhiro Hagakure. Is this our Yasuhiro? The notebook contained a large number of notes, a variety of different classes, which would mean he attended classes here. No, that can't be possible. I mean, Hiro came to this school at the same time as the rest of us, and were, we were all sucked into this evil work. We never had any chance to take any classes. So what is this notebook? Locker room notebook has been out of the truth bullet section of the handbook. But the more I see, the less it makes sense. Because of these lockers. I mean, they had to belong to previous students, right? So why am I seeing this? Why am I seeing things in the lockers that look like they belong to the people here? A notebook scene that seems to belong to Hiro. And a pocketbook that seems to belong to Kyoko. There has to be some kind of explanation. But if I want to find that out, I have to keep moving the investigation forward. And I have to believe in everyone. Leave the area. Is everyone working hard? Is your investigation coming along nicely? Well then, since you're all giving it your best, your generous headmaster will give you a little hint. <laughs> For those of you who are interested, please make your way to the gym ASA possible. What? Now he wants to give us a hint? It's suspicious. There's no doubt about that. This could be a trap. But even knowing that, he said to go to the gym, right? Oh, hey, hero. Oh, Makoto. Why'd you act surprised? Uh, um... Oh, uh, no reason. You heard Monokuma's announcement, right? Are you here to find out what he has to say? Mm. I... I... I just did, actually. I'm on my way out. You already talked to him. What did he say? Listen, sorry, but, but I... I gotta go. Hiro, wait. There's no point in trying to stop him. He ran off like a frightened animal. Hiro. It's like he was trying to avoid me. I was hoping to talk to him about the notebook I found in the locker. He's been hiding something. For this. Has he been hiding something this whole time? Probably. Honestly, probably. Wouldn't be shocked. I am Monokuma. Hello, welcome, uh, welcome, hello. Are you ready for your final hint? Well, it just so happens sitting in the envelope on the ground in front of you. The envelope? This must be the envelope. <laughs> and just so you know, I won't be answering any questions about what you find inside. What? Yeah. Don't worry, just get on with it. Monokuma's cryptic words didn't make me feel any better about what I picked up in the envelope, and I opened it. What I found was a single photograph. It featured a bunch of faces I recognized extremely well. It was everyone who had come to Hope Peak at the same time as me. Wait, but... There was someone behind Sayaka. She only... She's the only one I don't recognize. Wait, that's not true. I do recognize her. That's right. When Byakuya and I were in the headmaster's room, we looked at that... We looked at that file. Makuro Ikasaba. Then the girl is... What? Why? Why is Makuro here with everyone else? And even more than that... Just having everyone here pose like this is weird enough by itself. And we're all wearing matching uniforms. I don't remember anything like this. And now I'm looking at... It's not even everyone! I'm not in the picture. I'm the only one not there. The picture has all 15 other students, but not me. 
but I guess that makes sense. After all, I don't remember ever Tai taking a picture like this. I went to junior high with Siaka for the first time, but the first time I met everyone was, else was, when I arrived at Hope Peaks Academy. So it's natural for me not to be in this picture. But what's definitely unnatural is that everyone else is in the picture. I thought everyone was like me and didn't know each other till they got here. But if this picture is real, then that could mean, could it be everyone else and just me? Everyone here except me is... <laughs> How long are you going to keep this rambling soliloquy of yours, Hamlet? Hey, you are you getting... You're kind of getting in the way of standing here, you know? Hmm. So, I mean, get out. But I told you, I'm not feeling any questions. But what... What kind of mystery would this be if I gave you all the answers? That'd be totally out of left field. I guess that means he's done talking. Damn it. Group photos been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. So in the end, all I found in the gym was even more confusion. And that, with that confusion in my head, in hand, I left the gym dejected. How does that count as a hint? It just made even me even more confused. Is that what Monokuma was going for? He did put a, together a fake photo just to confuse me. Or did he put a, together a fake photo just to confuse me? But it looks so real, full of life. How could anyone fake that? Which would mean everyone but me. Maybe I should ask everyone directly. That should clear all this up. No, I have to clear all this up. I'm assuming this is dining hall time. Oh, we're going somewhere else. <coughs> we're going to the archive. Biakia is there now, too. Oh, Biakia. Listen, do you think we could talk? Biakia? I have nothing to talk to you about. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Hey, Biakia, wait. And of course he didn't. He just walked away. What the? Why was he acting like that? Like he was purposely trying to avoid me. Okay, two of them are here. Hey, hero. Ugh, M Makoto. What's wrong with you? Every time I see you, you freak out like that. Um, no, I... No, sorry, but I'm in a bit of a hurry. Once again, he ran off terrified like a terrified rabbit. Hero, what's wrong? I still wasn't able to talk to him about the notebook I found. It's like he was avoiding me. It's like he was afraid of me. Why?
Excuse me. So there's two people to find after this. I decided to visit the bio lab one more time. And the first thing I saw when I got there was her passed out again. Huh, Toko? To Toko, are you okay? No, no. She's not dead, is she? No, she's fainted. Ah. Uh, it's cold. It's super cold. It's so cold. I think I might catch a cold. If you, th if you keep taking naps in places like this, I'm sure you will. What? I was asleep. I must have fainted again. I bet I was standing. That you you were standing there staring at me, getting all excited, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Oh, then what? Hot and bothered, straight up and horny. Um. Okay, so why did you pass out? I don't know. The last thing I remember was me waking up now. Just what do you think? Or what did you do to Mrs. Mon or Morosi? Oh, that's right. Your memory stops and starts each time you switch. Bingo bazanga! We share the same basic knowledge, but our memories are still very much separate. And it. <coughs> And don't say it like it's a bad thing. It's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. Because even if she forgets something, I totally remember. So it's like a double memory. Oh no, it's more like half. Genocide Jack's memory. Then added the truth bullet section of your handbook. But all I want to know right now is, where's my little darling? Tell me now or I'll slit your throat. I, I don't know. I'm sure Biaki is right here somewhere doing his own investigating. Oh, yes. By himself? I assume so. I knew it. I totally knew it. I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master. Anyway, I gotta hurry. I can't imagine how lonely he is right now. <laughs> Toko shot off her eerie laughter echoing behind her. Ah, I totally forgot to ask her about the picture. Well, there's no point in asking Genocide Jack anyway. Besides, more importantly, the thing there are more important things I have to do right now. Why did Toko faint? There's gotta be a reason for it. The fridge. It's open. I am sure they were all shut last time I was here. That must be why she passed out. Right. She faints so easily. K Kyoko. Makoto. It's getting late, isn't it? Are, are you okay? Indeed. I'm sorry if I made you worry. No, no. You don't have to apologize. Listen. But listen. About this room. Oh, yeah. It's... It seems... It's a morgue. Yeah. I, knew. I suspected as much. And Togo must have looked inside the fridge and seen what was in there. Well, there you have it. You knew she fainted. Indeed. I was on I was on my way here when Genocide Jack came running past me. I assumed that she sneezed once. I assumed she must have sneezed, but once I got inside, the real reason became clear. I imagine that she came here to investigate, and when she opened the slot here, that that's when she saw the dead body and dropped like a bag of rocks. Why everything's got to be so difficult with her? Anyway. Anyway, we should we should close it up. I don't want to leave anyone hanging open like that. Yeah, good idea. Give me a hand with this. Kyoko approached the fridge, hands outstretched, but suddenly she stopped. What's Listen. wrong? Maybe we should wait a second here before closing it. Huh? How come? Because Makuro body, Makuro's body is in here. Makuro's corpse. Makuro's body is inside the fridge? Just like every other time, the mastermind probably brought it up here while we were in the class trial. The mastermind did it because they assumed that we would be do we wouldn't be doing the class trial over again. I guess. So. You may be right. Either way, now I finally get a good look at the body. Oh, that's right. Kyoko didn't get a chance to check the body during the last investigation. I need to do my own examination of the corpse as soon as possible. I'm going to find a clue this time, and I'm going to grab the mastermind by the tail. Okay. So what should I do? So then. Why don't you just wait over here? There? I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Just wait over there. That's it. I should ask Kyoko about the group photo. After all, she's in it too. Don't let me interrupt your investigation, but I wanted to ask you about something. What is it? It's about the announcement Monokuma made earlier. You mean the one about the hint or something? I didn't take him up on the offer. Huh? Why not? Because... The only reason that he'd give us a hint at this point would be to confuse us, to cloud our judgment. 
I can only solve this mystery on my own without whatever hints he may have to offer. That's a good point. I wish I could go back and do the same thing, but I guess what's done is done. Standing here, overlooking at her, I don't think she's hiding away from me. Is she right? Did the mastermind forge that picture as a trap to confuse us? That's got to be it. There's no other explanation. I can't leave the things the way they are right now. The fridge is meant to store for storing dead bodies. I can't do it. I can't look inside. You know, I think I've seen this harp somewhere before. Ah, it's the same one I found in the garden in the tool shed. I remember that tarp. It had a stamp on it that said Biolab. And that's the tarp that was used to help camouflage the murder in the garden. At some point, someone got in the Biolab and took it over there. Tarp has been updated to the Truth Bullet section. I've already looked into the instruction manual, but more important, more importantly. One on the left side of the refrigerator, a bunch of blue lights are on. But these aren't ones aren't. It would seem the blue light comes on when the slot is occupied. When someone else is in there, the light comes on. Looking around the number of lights that are on, including the Kuros, there's nine in all. Nine. Nine lights. Biolab lights has been updated to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay, Makoto, I'm done. Already? Jeez, that was fast. Anyone could do good work. If they go slow in that spirit, I'll make my re report brief. So did you find anything? I paid careful attention to the wounds and traces of blood, and it seems highly likely that the stomach wound and the blow to the back of the head were inflicted after death. Really? The burnt tissue made things a little difficult, but I'm completely confident in my findings. That means neither of those were fatal injuries, right? When what was the f Then what was the fatal injury? Due to an explanation, the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had that been stabbed a single time with a knife, but which went completely through the body. They'd also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered in other wounds, but there is at least, they were at least several days old. The only other option if is those other wounds that the file said were old. Where does that m say? Where does it say they're old, huh? Monokumo says it, that they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. Wrong. Well, the difference is immense considering the impression they gave. Listen. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old, However, but that doesn't quite follow logically. Our old wounds make it sound like they've been there forever, like they're not related to the murder. Are you saying they are? But we got the Monokuma file right after she was killed, right? So in other words, we're at least a few days old. There's no way they could have had anything to do with it. So then. But if Murkrow herself wasn't killed within the last few days, at what happened? Least. Certainly you can, f allow, you can allow it as one of the many possibilities, can't you? One right. of many. A detective doesn't have supernatural powers. There's no way to predict the answer from the beginning. Instead, the ideal detective begins imagining as many possibilities and scenarios as they In can. They, they envision these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, They only l using only the layer logic and common sense. Then, as they investigate, they test what they can find e they find against each other of the each of the other possibilities. Of course, me telling you this doesn't mean you'll be able to be good at detective work. But beyond using that to solve this particular mystery, you should be able to keep that in mind for the future. Kyoko's account has been added to the Truth Bullet section. Hey. So if there's anything else you'd like to know about the condition of the body, now's the time. Come to think of it, there's one thing. Earlier when I was looking at Makuro's profile, it listed her height and weight. So... 5 foot 7 inches, 97 pounds. Vials were 31, 22, 32. Did I get all that right? 
You remembered all that? They were indeed consistent with the corpse. So then... Indeed. And don't forget about the Fenrir tattoo. That absolute, that's ab There's absolutely no mistake. Indeed. Our victim in this case, without a doubt, is Makuro Ikazaba. Makuro Ikazaba's profile has been updated on the Truth Bullet section of your handbook. And? Is that what all you wanted to ask? Yeah, I think so. so. Then. then it looks like we have no further business with Makuro's body. Let's get going. It's kind of chilly in here. Oh, wait. Are we not going to put the body back? Don't you think it's kind of sad leaving it out like this? Why? Sad. Did you forget? She is our enemy. She was our enemy once. Part of the ultimate despair. But she got killed. She's a victim. Hey. Have you ever heard of the phrase, you reap what you sow? Well, yeah, but still. <sighs> you really are naive, you know that? It's really quite appalling. But she could have abandoned me, and she decided to help me instead. For someone like that, what does it mean to be naive? So then. I think we've done all that we can do here. Back to our separate investigations, yes? Ah, hold on. I still have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. I need to ask her about the pocketbook I found in the locker. If we, if I don't do it now... Hey, Kyoko. I have one last thing. I shouldn't... I know I shouldn't, but I feel like I have to ask. What? Go ahead, then. Out with it. Have you really not seen your dad s uh, even once since you got here? What? So... What do you mean? Well, you know all the lockers on the second floor of the dorms? I do, yes. But to get in any of the lockers, you need a handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to put open them using that emergency handbook. I see. The one you found in the headmaster's room. And? So, did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found a pocketbook. And after looking through it, I think it must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... Like I said, the only locker, only the locker's owner should be able to open it and get into it, right? I can't imagine the lockers belong to any of us. After all, we only got access to that area just recently. What I'm saying is there's no way I could have had access to those lockers. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? Everything you said makes perfect sense makes perfect sense but there was something written inside it was about the headmaster about your father what? if that's true that could mean that video is real too video makoto makoto i think everything is finally starting to fit together to reveal a cohesive picture although i'm afraid that the picture might be worse than anything we could have ever imagined well, what are you talking I... about i need to go investigate those lockers right now I need to confirm that you what you just said with my own two eyes. Oh, let me give you the headmaster's handbook. That way you can. So... That won't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the locker with my own handbook. After all, it would seem that it's my locker. Your locker. Dakota. If you watch it, if you watch this, it'll make all make sense. A DVD. And it says Class 78, Urgent Interviews. So... I found it hidden in that or in that hidden room after you left. Anyway. I don't have any time to explain why. What I think is it might mean. So just watch it and see for yourself. I think you'll know exactly what it means. You'll understand why you found my pocketbook in a place that none of us have seen before. None of us none of this makes sense right now. But I guess this means that there's an important clue on the DVD. Interview DVD has been out of the truth bullet section of your handbook. Dakota. Oh, and now it's my turn. Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Ramble? In other words. So as it turns out, the arrangements I'd made didn't stick. What I mean is, I'm less and less sure of everything, even my own feelings. You're talking about your dad, right? I can never find the answers to the questions I wanted to ask for the rest of my life, and all because of the mastermind. However. There's one thing I'm sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I'm I swore to destroy the mastermind. This is one, just one reason to follow through on that. Kyoko's eyes burned with the fire of determination. The determination to defeat the mastermind. It's strange to be so confident with his death and suddenly feel this way. I couldn't care less about my father had that my fa if my father had found happiness. Why? So why is it? 
Why does it bother me so much to, the, to know how he suffered? It's ridiculous. There's just no understanding. It. Uh, she let out a small laugh as she said it, but her smile filled with sorrow. <gasps> so that was f it for my rambling. There's still too much to do. I can consider my task complete. Yeah, you're right. Hey. But keep this in mind. There will only be one absolute truth. Whether that truth serves justice or suffering. Whether it's the greatest truth or the worst. What do you mean? Makoto. Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness, you still can't give up hope. Absolutely not, because because all I can do is keep moving forward. That's pretty much all I'm good at now, you know? Indeed. Sorry if that was strange. So then. Anyway, I need to get going. I'll see you at the class trial. Leaving behind a final farewell, Kyoko was gone. I'd better get going myself. I got that DVD from Kyoko. I should head to the AV room and check it out. Kyoko said something about hopeless truth. But no matter what happens, I won't lose hope. Even if that is the worst truth in the world, I can't afford to lose. And unfortunately, we're going to be having to leave Makoto in this room for quite a while. Um, hopefully you have a wonderful day. We love you all so much. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.